devil is fighting harder and harder uh, to destroy and to discourage and to keep people down and make them afraid all the time. Now, you watch the news and you look at the news cycles and you watch all the corruption in the world. And you know what? If we're not careful, we'll get afraid a little bit, won't we? But I'll tell you something. I still don't have to have sleeping pills to go to sleep at night. Some people doing that's fine. But I'm blessed with sleep, amen. I can lay down my head on my pillow, and if I don't sleep, it's not because I'm worrying about the cares of this world, amen. amen. Now, sometimes I don't sleep because I'm, I just don't go to bed early enough. That's why I don't sleep sometimes. Sometimes I don't sleep because of, uh, you know, because of maybe uh, something else on my mind. But, but because of the, I'm not worried about this world, friend. I'm just not worried about this world, and I'm not worried about the world situation because I know my God's got it all in control. Say amen. I asked a person earlier this morning, I walked up to that person, and I, I you know, I said, uh, what's something you're afraid of? And they jumped back, and uh, like I was fixing to do something to them. I didn't know I had that effect on people. I walked by one person this morning and said good morning, and they, they shouted. I mean, they just got all excited. And, uh, and it was just, you know, it was just a fear. And, and uh, this person had jumped back, and this kind of bothered me a little bit, but when they said, uh, when this person I asked what they were afraid of, and they looked at me real quick, and they, they said, I'm afraid of snakes. And they was looking at me when they said that. <laughs> so everybody in here has got a fear of something. How many of you are, seriously, now how many of you are afraid of something? You have a fear of something. Everybody, everybody's got some kind of fear. They call it a phobia. And uh, I want to give you just a few of these this morning and, and let you think about a couple of things. In Isaiah chapter 43, there's the greatest passage of Scripture that I personally, that I know of in the Scripture that deals with fear. Now there's many, I think 60-something times fear not is mentioned in the Scripture. But this is one of the greatest passages that I know of where God where God is telling people about fear and telling people to fear not. He's talking to the nation of Israel. And uh, Israel is, is not going to always be uh, bombarded. They're not always going to be attacked. Now, they have been through the history of their life. They've been in bondage. They've come out of bondage. They've went back into bondage. They've fought the enemy. They've faced the enemy. And from the, from the beginning of the history of the nation of Israel, they have been under assault and under attack. But God is telling them that they are going to be a redeemed people, that they're going to be a, uh, that they are a protected people, that they are God's people. And the Bible tells Israel in chapter number 43 this, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. Amen. Now I read this to you in context that God is addressing the nation of Israel, but I make application with every word that I read, I make application to me. Amen. And to you. Fear not. I have redeemed thee. And have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia, and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable. And I have loved thee, therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the reading of the word of God. Bless us now, I pray. God, let us leave here this morning. Lord, knowing that there are fears out there, knowing that there's things of concern. Lord, knowing that there's 
uh, real fears. And God, we face them every day. But God, we know that you are with us. And God, I pray that you would help us, Lord, to face our fears and face our worries and face our doubts. And knowing deep inside, God, that you've got it all under control. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And as, it, as, as the, the Lord is addressing the nation of Israel and all that they had been through and all the captivity that they were, uh, had been in and those that they were going in into the future, God's telling them to fear not. Now, I, I've, I've talked to people in the last couple of weeks and preacher, what are we going to do? What's going to happen? What's going to go on in our world? Is ISIS going to take over our land? Are, are we going to, are Christians going to be persecuted for the cause of Christ? I don't have all the answers. I have what I might think, but I don't know all the answers. But guess what I do know? God in heaven knows. Amen? And guess what I do know? He's my God. I'm His. And listen, we can live in these last days and not fear. Amen? And I struggle. I struggle sometimes with, with wondering. I don't worry about it because God knows what He's doing. But I do wonder for our young children in the church. And I do wonder for my grandchildren and my children what we may face in the coming days and coming years if Jesus don't come back. But there is nothing that we will face that God hadn't allowed people in the past to face. And he has saw them through and he will see you and I through. Amen. Now I can stop right there and go to the house and feel real good. Amen. Because I know that God will help us in our time of fear. Now, I've, I've had frightful things happen to me in my past. I've looked, at the, I've looked down the barrel of a gun. The man threatened to shoot me. Was I afraid? Yeah, I was only about nine years old. I was scared to death. But did God see me through? Yeah, he did. I faced a man walking up on my steps one night trying to get in my house. And I wasn't real afraid that night. I had my... I had my, uh, my uh, well, I had something that he wasn't going to get in the house with, okay? And, and my deterrent turned him away, and he went and got in his car and drove off, never seen or heard from him again. But I was still fearful. I was still, you know, and, and we face those fears. You all could name time after time the things in your life that you've been afraid of. I don't walk in this cemetery back there on graves that look like they've got a little sinkhole in them. Now, people laugh at me and make fun of me, but I don't care. If I was to walk across one and my foot go through it, I'd die. <laughs> I would have a heart attack and die, and you just dig that hole a little deeper and put me in whatever's left down in that hole. <laughs> and I'm not afraid to say that. Anybody ever try something to me, I'll kill you. I'll, I'll break every bone in your body. My boss, man, he bought a piece of property uh, for us to hunt on, I'll be doing some conferences this year down in South Carolina. But he bought some, some property for us to hunt on. And guess what's on that property? A family cemetery. <laughs> Found out there's two Confederate soldiers buried in there. And uh, I don't know what all the history is to it, but we was down there the other day and we was looking at that thing over. And I was real careful where I put my feet. And he made fun of me. He said, I'm going to come out here while you ain't looking. I'm digging a hole out here. And you're going to walk through here and fall in. And I said, I'll break every bone in your body if I live. But it's a fear. And that's silly. I know that's silly. And I don't know why that bothers me, but it does. But if you see me walking around out here, I'm walking real close to where I, not where I might fall in. It's a fear. Well, as silly as that may be, I know people that are afraid of lots of other things that are silly too. I know one person that will not go out there in the nighttime. They're not necessarily afraid of, of the cemetery, but they ain't going out there at night. Now, whatever your fear may be, you've got a fear, and it bothers you. Now, listen, as we think these things, there is a fear called ablutophobia. And I can't say half of these, so you'll just have to take my word for it. I'll show you later. Ablutophobia, which is a, <laughs> there's a lot of people in Black Mountain got this one. It's a fear of washing or bathing. <laughs> I thought they were just nasty, but I guess they've got this, I guess they've got, they've got this phobia. Then there's a fear of acarophobia, which is a fear of itching or of insects that cause itching. That ain't arachnophobia, I'll get that in a minute. But people's got a phobia of itching. 
And you see, you know, you can start scratching yourself around somebody. Have you ever done that? And start doing this around somebody. And if you do it long enough, half the people you're around will start scratching. And <laughs> now watch that. I see two, three of you already. <laughs> there is a acrophobia, which is a fear of darkness. Uh, there is acoustophobia, which is a fear of noise. I ain't got that. I promise you, I ain't got that. There is an aerophobia, which is a fear of, of air, wind, swallowing air, or airborne, airborne substances. Afraid to breathe. Now, how would you like to have that, a, a phobia that you're afraid to breathe? Now, I think there's one that comes in my store. Seriously, because I've never seen her without a mask on her face when she comes in the store. Summer or winter, she's always got that mask on her face. I think she's afraid to breathe. Uh, there is uh, <clears throat> areoacrophobia, which is a fear of high, open high places. In other words, standing out on a uh, out on a ledge, looking down like that. We were over in Egypt, and uh, we were staying in Cairo the last night. We were staying in Cairo, in downtown Cairo, and we were up in one of the what they call a five star five star uh, hotel over there. And really, around here, it'd be about a two. But anyway, they called it a five star over there. And I walked to the window, and I, it was up, I think it was on the 10th floor or something like that. I walked to the window, and I opened the window up, and guess what? There ain't a screen or nothing on that window. And I lean over and look, at, look out, and I thought, I'd hate to fall out of this window. But now, there's people that wouldn't even go near that window because they, you know, couldn't, they have that fear, fear of, of, of high places and uh, fear of, of falling from those high places. Uh, let's see. There's agathophobia, which is the fear of insanity or becoming insane. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was trying to get by with that one, but that's just funny. <laughs> there is a electro electorophobia, which is the fear of chicken. Now these are all serious. These are these are all serious things. I mean, these are things which people have fears of. Yeah, fear of chicken. There's, there's a legophobia, a legophobia, which is the fear of pain. There is alienphobia, which is the fear of garlic. People are afraid of these things. There's names for these things that people have fears for. There's a maxophobia, which is a fear of riding in a car. There's auto, this now I'll never pronounce, automatonophobia, which is a fear of ventriloquist dummies. Now, can you imagine people having, having enough people having enough of these kind of fears for them to put them in a list of fears? Now, why don't they just say everybody's afraid of something and be done with it? Why do they have to name it? So some psychologist can charge somebody $100 there to tell them they're, they're afraid of, of ventriloquist dummies. That's why. Uh, let's see. There's the dummies. Is that what's everywhere? Oh, there is atomosophobia, atomosophobia, which is the fear of being dirty. Uh, there is autophobia, which is the fear of being alone or by oneself or solitude. Now, I know people that don't like to be alone. I don't have that at all. Once in a while, I like to be by myself, as far away as I can get from anything or anybody. So I can talk to myself and not have to worry about anybody hearing me. There's a taxophobia. And it ain't what you think. It's the fear of disorder or untidiness. There's aviophobia, which is a fear of flying. Uh, there's, <laughs> there is a rack, a rack of eutrophobia. <laughs> I laughed at this one. But it's the fear of having peanut butter stuck to the roof of your mouth. Now listen, I have, I have somewhat of a fear uh, of claustrophobia. I, not as bad as it used to be. I used to would not ride an elevator if given any other option whatsoever. I wish I still had that because I wouldn't weigh as much as I do now. I used to go the stairs all the time everywhere I went. Go to the hospital, 10th floor, up in stairs I'd go. And uh, somewhere along the line, I guess because going with other people uh, that I and I think part of my problem is one day my cousin and I, Brother D-Lane, we went to South Carolina to visit somebody in the hospital. I had never thought of it before then. 
And we got on that hospital. We's mean. I mean, I, you know, we just, we's mean. And there was this fellow on there on, on that, and and he kind of kept looking around, and uh, we kind of knowed he was afraid. And so it bumped a little bit, and and uh, my my cousin said, he said, "Man, I hope we don't get caught between floors." That fellow perked up his ear. And then I said, man, I just hope it makes it without falling like that last one did. Well, about that time, the, the elevator stopped, and he got off that elevator. He said, I'm getting off of here. <laughs> now, ever since then, I've kind of had a fear. Of, of, <laughs> hey, whatever your fear is, there's a name for it. And you look it up, and you can find it. That's, that's what I gave you is about 10 of at least 100 that I came up with, and that's just the ones that I could halfway pronounced what they are. Some of them are that long. And, 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 but people got fears. Now, I said all that, all that to say this. Everybody has a fear of some kind, but God tells us in his word that we're to fear not. Now, there's people that, that, will, that will die with their fears. There's people that will go to the grave having certain fears. I'm sure I will. I'm sure you probably will. But in the day-to-day -day life in which we live, those little old things that we, that those things really don't matter a whole lot to us, does it? I mean, you're afraid of getting peanut butter stuck to the roof of your mouth? Don't eat peanut butter. There's a simple fix for that. And if you're afraid of riding in elevators, don't get on an elevator. If you're afraid of looking off high places, don't do it. Whatever your fear is, there's usually a simple cure for that fear. But the fear that I believe we're finding out about here in the Word of God is fear that we cannot handle. It's fears of things that we have no control over whatsoever. And there the Bible tells us that we're to fear not. Now again, I look around this world and I see the terrible mess this world is in. And, and, and you look and you see and, and you look at all the gruesome details of all that goes on in the world today and you fear. You, it's natural for people to fear. But listen, God says in his word, what? He says, but now this saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and, be, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. How many of you here this morning can say I'm saved by the grace of God? Say amen. You know why you're saved? Because you've been redeemed by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I were on our way to hell lost without God. And God in his love and his mercy saw fit to send his son Jesus to die on the cross of Calvary to pay my sin debt. He paid a debt. That he redeemed me by his blood on the cross of Calvary. He redeemed me and paid a debt that I could not pay. Listen, when I got saved, I had a fear. I was afraid I was going to hell without God. You know what the problem is? Ain't many people got that fear anymore because there's not been enough of, the, of, of, of them being told that if you don't get saved, your eternity will be in hell. And they don't have that fear. But when I saw that I was going to hell, friend, I had a fear in me. And the Bible says fear not. Why? Because he paid my sin debt. He bought my salvation. He redeemed me, and we should fear not if we've been redeemed by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We've been redeemed. And we should not fear the things that sometimes we do that we have no control over because we are a redeemed people. The price has been paid, and when it's all said and done, whether I fill a hole in the ground somewhere or whether I go through a hole in the sky, I'm redeemed, and I'm all right for eternity. Hallelujah to God. Amen. So why should we fear? This is the day when God's people don't need to fear, but we need to be bold. We need to be strong testimonies for the things of God and for the Word of God. We need to be strong in our beliefs and our faith in what we believe in. It's no time to be afraid, but it's time as good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ that we charge, amen, we charge on for the good things of God, amen. Now even at that, the world will tell you there's no place for that. Your workplace may tell you that there's no place for that. The schools may tell you that there's no place for that. 
The government may tell you there's no place for that, but I'm telling you what, in my soul and in my heart, there is something greater in me than that is that is in the world, and you and I should be faithful to stand for what's right. Stand for the truth. And be courageous and be strong in the power of his might. And fear not. When thou passest through the waters, he said, I will be with thee. He was, was he not? When the children of Israel went through the Red Sea, he was with them. When they went through the Jordan River, he was with them. He will be with you when you pass through the waters of the troubles and trials of this life. I know how it is to get in so deep. Sometimes you think you're going to drown with sorrow and you think you're going to drown with trouble. But remember, God is with us. Amen. God is with us. And you're facing worries and fears and troubles and you feel like you're about to drown in your fears. Remember, the Bible says, fear not, I'm with you in your troublesome times of floods and of water. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt be with me. I think of this and I think about the three Hebrew boys as they were cast into the, the fiery furnace. And they were cast into that fiery furnace and the king looked on and said, Look, did we not cast three men into the fire? But I see four and one and that one walking around. The fourth one looketh like the Son of God. I'm telling you what, friend, when we go through the fire, God in heaven will be right there with us. Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And it doesn't matter what problems you go through. Jesus is right there with you all the way, every step of the way. He's there to encourage and to uplift and to hold your hand. And if you feel like you're going to stumble, thank God, friend, he'll pick you up and he'll carry you all the way. Hallelujah, I'm glad I've got Jesus. Amen. So if you feel, if you have a fear of failure, which most Christians have a fear of failing, and I don't know anybody that wants to fail, but that fear of failure, if you'll just remember that when we're going through a fiery trial, when we're going through a time when it seems like there's no way out or no way up, Remember, God's not going anywhere. He's right there. And if you'll just look around, hallelujah to God, Jesus is there. He's with you in the fire. Amen. Oh, my friend, what we need today is strong believers in the Lord that when it comes their time, listen, I've been through trials and I've been through tests. I'm going through something right now. I ask God this morning, God, you got to help me. But guess what? God's not give up. He's not give up on me. He'll not give up on you. And when we go through the valley, thank God, the Lord is my shepherd. He will be with us. What have we got to fear? What have you got to fear? Someone said there's nothing to fear but fear itself. I don't know about all that. But I know when I've got a fear, I know that God in heaven will help me if I'll just look to him. Oh, I've been fearful many times in my life. I can give you all kinds of illustrations and tell you all kinds of stories of things that have happened in my life. And many of them I were, was afraid for my life. But God in heaven saw it through. And friend, I'll tell you this. When you're facing the trials of life and the fiery trials of this life, remember, I will be with you. I will be with you. Fear not. I will be with you. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. <clears throat> thou shalt not, when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And, he asked, and you ask, why? For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Fear not. We have a God, friend. We've got an eternal, almighty, omniscient, I'm not present God that is with us all the time. Now listen, if I'm walking through a world, now I gave the illustration I, last week, week before last, some of you here, some of you weren't, about if you look at, at yourself in the broad spectrum of where we're at, we find out we're nothing. I don't know how men can be so haughty and high-minded that they think they can be something. Listen, the most powerful man in the world, the world, the man with the most money in the world is nothing in the eyes of Almighty God. 
And you put yourself as a little grain of sand. Make yourself as a little grain of sand and set yourself alone upon this planet and you'll see how small you are. You take that little grain of sand and set yourself on the planet of this, on this earthly planet and you put yourself there and you put yourself there in the midst of our solar system and you see how insignificant you really are. Put all of that in the, in the, in the spectrum of the, of the universe that we're in. You see how small that you and I are. But I've got a God. Amen. I've got a God in heaven that created this earth, that created this universe, that created this solar system. I've got a God, and he is my father. Amen. So what does that make me? Why should I fear the things when I am the son of the person that created the heavens and the earth? Fear not. Now these little wimpy people of this world that, that, you know, that boast of all their power and these little wimpy ices, people that go around beheading people and think they're something and think they're powerful and think they're strong. All they do is strike fear in the hearts of man, but my God in heaven will one day take care of all of that with his spoken word. Amen. Why should we fear? Why should we fear? I'll give you three things real quick. You said, Preacher, you weren't going to be long. You've already been 30 minutes. Three things real quick. I've done preach to you. I, I'm going to quit lying to you. I apologize for saying we'll not be real long. I'm going to quit saying that, okay? Because y'all looking at me like you're a liar, preacher. You're just looking at me, preacher. You ain't telling us the truth. Fear not, number one. Fear not for the future. For God holds the future. Now, I can't tell you what's going to happen tomorrow in my life or tomorrow in your life, but I know God knows he's already there. I can't tell you what's going to happen to to this, uh, to this country, great country of ours in the next few years. But God knows, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fear not because of the future. Number two, I told you I'd be quick. Number two, fear not your failures. There is not a perfect person in this church this morning. And for that one that thought you were, I just told you the truth about yourself. There's no one, no perfect people in this world. I know people that think they're perfect. Yes, sir, I know people that think they have never made a mistake in their life and that everyone else in the world should look up to them because they're not going to look down to even look at you because they're perfect. Amen. You know people like that too that think they are perfect and that God made them and them alone and nothing else will ever. Listen, there's never been a perfect man walk this planet except the Lord Jesus Christ, only one. Everybody else that's walked this life has been a total failure compared to what Jesus is. Amen? Amen. So you're going to fail, but there is no reason for you to fear because of your failures. What you do is you learn from those failures and try your best by the help of God not to relive that in the future. But don't, listen, don't quit. Don't back down. Don't be afraid to fail because you did something for God. And I'll truly tell you, I'd rather try to do something for God and mess up than not do anything at all. When I first started preaching, I was, I was, and I still am, I, I've still not learned to preach, thank God. I've not learned to preach, and I don't hope I never do learn to preach. But when I first started preaching, I got my Bible. Was you there when I preached my first message? I was going to ask her opinion, but I'm afraid she'd tell the truth. <laughs> that had to be the worst preaching ever done by any human being. About five minutes of reading and sobbing and crying, and that was it. That was all of it. That was done. But oh, my goodness. Oh, by, by God's help, friend, I don't go back. I didn't quit because I felt like I failed. I took some instruction from people, and I was trying to do right. And you know what? I, if I'd have, if I'd have based ever, if I'd have based everything on that one service, I'd have never got in front of a crowd again. But guess what? God in heaven, I knew that God wanted me to do that, and I knew that He wanted me to preach. And I said, God, you put it in me, and I'll give it out. Amen. And I want to tell you, when I learned that, God put it in me, and I'll put it out with the help of God. I'm not afraid, friend. I'm not afraid of failing. I'm scared 
to fail God. But I'm not afraid to put my trust in the Lord and let him help me. Fear not of failure. You fail, you get up, you go on, and you don't just stay there because you fail. Who was it? Who was it? They were, they were inventing some of Thomas Edison. He's the one who invented a light bulb, wasn't he? He said, how many, how many times did you fail before you made the light bulb? He said, I didn't fail at all. He said, I just learned a thousand times how not to make a light bulb burn. <laughs> Amen. What an attitude. But you and I, you say, preacher, I've messed my life up. I've failed so many times. God can never use me again. I was talking to a man yesterday, and we was talking about the failure of someone. And I said, look, I look back in the Bible, and I see all kinds of people that messed up a whole lot worse than he did, but God still used them, and God still blessed them. And I'll tell you, friend, if you failed in the past, do not let that affect your future. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you hear what I said? I said, if you failed in the past, do not let that, affect, uh, do not let that have an effect on what you do in the future for the Lord. You get it under the blood of Jesus. God forgets about it. He don't remember it no more. The only person that remembers it is those that will hold it against you and the devil, and he'll bring it back to your memory. But God, God will still use you. Amen. Number three, don't be afraid of your faults. Fear not your faults. And I've got many of them. And you have many of them. Remember, no perfect people except the Lord Jesus. You're going to mess up and you're going to fail. And you're going to have faults that somebody will find in you constantly. But listen, you don't have to answer to nobody but God. You answer to Him for your life. You answer to God. And if people think that you're failing and that you're a failure and that, and, and, and that you have all kinds of faults, amen, you deal with it with the Lord, amen. Don't worry about what everybody else says. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And if you've got faults, God will help you to correct those faults. God will help you not to have the faults that you have. And by His help, He'll help you to control this. Fear not. I'm through. Fear not. Don't be afraid of how long the preacher's going to preach on Sunday morning because you're hungry. I told you, bring a pack of crackers if you think you're going to get hungry before I get through. Just don't make no racket with the paper. <laughs> Amen. Fear not. Listen, the Bible says fear not. And we need to leave this morning with our heads up high in this world that we live in and say, God, by your help, I'm going to live a life of victory. And I'm going to live a life that that I'm not going to be afraid of while we live these last exciting days on earth right before Jesus comes for the church. You and I are living in that day. Hallelujah. Fear not. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word. God, we thank you for your help. Lord, I thank you, God, for your blessings. Lord, help us, Lord, to live in this life without fear, without fear of failure. Lord, help us to serve you and do your will. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. While every head bowed, no one looking around. I wonder if there's someone here this morning. Uh, say, preacher, I've never feared as a Christian because I've never been saved. Well, I'll tell you the truth this morning, friend. Except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. I know a man that went out into eternity this week, and I have no idea if the man was, was saved or lost. I didn't know him that well. I didn't get a chance to be around him that much, but from all that's been told, he was either lost or terribly backslidden on God. And if he was lost, friend, he's in hell today. And I've cringed all week at the thought of anybody dying and going to hell.